Okay, uh, so in this presentation, I'm going to give uh, a summary of the importance of uh, unmodeled uh, bar searches in the search for uh, binary neutron star mergers in uh, LIGO Virgo, and I'm also going to give uh, a brief recap of, um, of the achievements in the post-merger post paper for GW17-0817. Uh, so I, I guess you are all familiar with uh, uh, these events, so I'm, going, I'm not going to spend much time uh, on uh, the first part of the, of the presentation. So, of course, we had the all, uh, mm, it was the first event that we were able to observe both in gravitational with gravitational waves and uh, uh, with electromagnetic, ob electromagnetic observations, and it was also the closest uh, gravitational wave event observed so far. And one uh, a thing that is worth uh, stressing is that uh, mm, binary neutron star mergers can be used uh, as a standard science for uh, uh, the measurement of the Hubble constant because, of course, we, cannot, we have uh, independent measurements of the distance of the host galaxy and from which, of course, we can then uh, have the Hubble velocity of the host galaxy. And then we have the distance of the event uh, obtained with gravitational wave observ observations. And, of course, by combining these two results, we, we, can, give, uh, we can measure the, the Hubble constant. And uh, the value that was inferred uh, with GW170817 is uh, well compatible with the previous measurements of the Hubble constants and sits exactly in the middle uh, with respect to the estimate of uh, H0 with Planck and H0 using uh, um, supernovae. And hopefully, uh, using uh, binary neural star measures, we will, we will be able to describe the discrepancy between these two measurements. So, uh, which are the possible fates for uh, a binary neutron star? Where, uh, well, uh, there are many of them. For example, uh, a neutron star can, uh, after the merger, can undergo a prompt collapse to a black hole, and uh, it will occur at the frequency of uh, uh, six, uh, seven kilohertz. Or uh, it will undergo a delayed collapse, uh, a delayed collapse to a supermassive neutron star, or to an hypermassive neutron star or eventually also to a stable neutron star. The main difference between uh, this, uh, these two fates is the, um, what uh, we can see after, or, or at least I should say, what uh, we, uh, we would like to see after the merger. If the binary neutron star uh, promptly collapsed to a black hole, well, basically after the merger we would observe a ring down like signal. On the other hand, if uh, the binary neutron star uh, would undergo a delayed collapse to a to one of these uh, kind of neutron star, we, we would observe a, um, a post-merger signal after the, the merger. And this, and this, this post-merger signal, of course, is uh, uh, extre extremely important for constraining the um, neutron star equation states and also the, uh, the physics uh, of, uh, of the neutron stars. So, um, which parameter can we reconstruct using the um, the binary neutron star waveform. Well, from the spiral, uh, we can measure the phase evolution, and so we can measure the, mm, we can give an estimate of the tidal deformability of the two neutron star, so that we can put constraints on the equation of state uh, uh, stiffness. Then, of course, we will have the merger here, and uh, uh, after the merger, we, uh, we, would, mm, we can have a post-merger signal. Uh, in which, uh, whose frequency peaks are strictly related to um, um, some important parameters of the equation of state, uh, uh, such as the compactness of the neutron stars, the radius, and so on. And of course, um, after the delayed collapse to a black hole, we would have a ring down like signal uh, from which we can infer the final mass and, and spin of the black hole. So, <coughs> The phase evolution, as I said, uh, is driven mainly by the tidal deformability, where k is the tidal, um, the log number of the equation of state, r is the um, radius of the neutron star, and uh, small r is the um, uh, orbital separation of the two neutron stars. But uh, if the neutron stars are spinning, uh, the phase evolution uh, will be driven by another equation of state dependent uh, effect, uh, that uh, will scale as uh, 1 over r squared. So it will dominate this one at uh, large orbital separation. And in this case, q is a parameter that describes the, um, 
the quadrupolar deformation of the of the neutron stars, and thus is the s is the uh, is the uh, the spin parameter. So at large distance distances, uh, this effect will dominate over this one that will uh, become will uh, become more important only at smaller orbital separations. Then, as I said, from the post merger. Uh, mm, the peaks, the frequency peaks in the post-merger are um, strictly related to other parameters of the, uh, of the equation of state. And basically what we have are uh, three uh, frequency peaks, uh, three strong peaks, and eventually we can also have an, a fourth peak that uh, um, uh, is caused by mod couplings in the, um, in the um, remnant, uh, uh, in the neutron star remnant. But <clears throat> what are the drawbacks of these kinds of events? Well, basically, uh, these events are extremely difficult to model. So uh, a, a, an extremely wide parameter space uh, uh, has to be explored. And we can also have, uh, uh, we, can, we can also expect some unmodeled physics, some uh, uh, unmodeled physics and uh, unexpected event. So, uh, inadequate uh, templates uh, used in match filtering uh, searches can, of course, lead to a potential loss of signal and, uh, uh, and information. Also, because with, uh, um, with a very wide parameter space, uh, fully, uh, a full uh, uh, match filtered uh, analysis is almost unfeasible, especially in the post-merger part of the, of the signal. So, what we need are procedures that do not rely uh, on models. That's why in LIGO Virgo we have uh, two different approaches. We have template searches that, of course, use a, a much filter, a much filter uh, approach. But on the other end, we have bar searches that make minimal or no assumption on the, on the source uh, waveform, uh, on the model, and on the parameters of the source. And of course, these are uh, perfect for searching for unmodeled and unmodeled physics and un unexpected sources. Of course, they uh, will be slightly limited, limited in the parameter estimation with respect to template searches, but they are still very uh, robo robust, in, um, uh, statistically speaking. And they, of course, they are both suitable for uh, low latency analysis. This is a, a, a brief summary of how low latency pipeline work in, in LIGO Virgo. Basically, we have three uh, low latency pipelines. We have coherent wave bars that uh, I've uh, highlighted because it's the one we work with. Uh, then we have the OLIB and the uh, base wave that is the uh, base flow up of So basically, what, what we have is that uh, it would be processed by CWB uh, from then the triggers produced by CWB and Omicron will be uh, followed up by base wave and later they will be stored in the conventional uh, database of uh, Lego Virgo, ready to be sent to the EM partners for This is a brief summary of how CWB works. So <clears throat> here I'm showing the case of uh, a free, free detector network, but of course this can be generalized for uh, uh, network of uh, N detectors. So basically we have the data stream of the three detectors. It will undergo data conditioning and after that uh, it will be transformed in the, the data will be transformed in the time frequency domain uh, so that we are able to reconstruct time frequency maps for uh, the, the detectors. And after that uh, a network time frequency map is built in which using uh, an access power st statistic, we select those trigger, th those pixels that will uh, generate uh, a triggers. After that, the triggers are analyzed coherently for the whole network of detector using a constrained likelihood uh, uh, approach in order to estimate the signal waveform and to reconstruct the uh, parameters of the source. And <clears throat> this is a summary of uh, the results of the GW170817 post-merger analysis using uh, uh, bar searches, uh, especially using uh, coherent wave bars and also another procedure that is, uh, is called STAMP that is mainly used for, uh, uh, let's say, uh, long, uh, um, long bars, long transients, transients that are less than uh, uh, 500 seconds. So, 
the estimated post-merger energy for GW170817 is uh, more or less 3.3 uh, solar masses times C square. And for short duration, short duration signals, CWB has a lower limit of uh, 4.8. So <coughs> in this case, uh, um, no constraints are possible and the best upper limit for the HRSS at 50% uh, detection e efficiency is 2.1 times 10, uh, 10 to the minus 22 uh, 1 over uh, root hertz. Then on the other end, for intermediate duration signals, there are um, signals that uh, are less than 500 seconds long. Um, we had two uh, different upper limits. Uh, one for the bar model, uh, bar mod model for the um, uh, neutron star remnant. And in this case, the HRSS was uh, 5.9 5 times 10 to, 10 to the minus 22 with an estimated uh, gra um, gravitational wave energy of uh, uh, two solar masses times C square. And for the ma uh, magnetar model, the best upper limit uh, uh, is 8.4 uh, time, uh, times 10 to the minus 22, and the uh, estimated gravitational wave energy is four solar masses times C square. So can we observe a um, post-merger signal uh, uh, with current sensitivity in the LIGO Virgo network? Well, the answer is uh, not yet because uh, the sensitivity is uh, not enough. The post-merger falls in a frequency band in which the, um, uh, the detectors are not really uh, sensitive enough and uh, not well calibrated. We are in a region that is uh, uh, between um, 10, uh, sorry, between 2 and 4 kilohertz. And if you want to observe the um, black hole ring down, the, it would be at uh, 6 or 7 kilohertz. So it's really uh, outside the, uh, the most sensitive frequency band of uh, LEGO Virgo. So at the moment, we are only able to put to set upper limits on the signal. So <clears throat> to summarize, uh, with current sensitivities, uh, um, at 40 megaparsec, that is the distance at which GW170817 occurred, uh, even the, a, a very lucky match filter search would have a, a, an SNR of uh, less than two. And at the same sensitivity for the advanced detector, uh, a lucky match filter search uh, would be able to detect uh, a, a post-merger signal between 20, uh, four signals between 10, 20, uh, 20 and 40 megaparsecs. So uh, what I mean with the uh, lucky matched filter search, well, uh, a matched filter search that has a waveform that, uh, a, post a waveform for the post-merger that uh, exactly matches the parameters of the, uh, of, the, of the signal that we are observing. So given the theoretical uncertainties of uh, this kind of signals, uh, uh, unmodeled searches are uh, very important for uh, constraining uh, um, neutral star equation of states. That's all. Okay, thanks so much. <coughs> okay, are there questions or comments? Okay. I have a question and a comment. <laughs> okay. Uh, Okay, maybe I do the comment. Uh, the comment is about the quadrupole monotone that you mentioned. So I think it's not uh, correct to say that it dominates uh, on at, at shorter distance because it depends actually on the coefficient that are in front of that. Okay. And, and on the speed, of course. So um, what has been shown is that it is not dominate, is, is actually not dominate exactly. And the tides are much, sorry, the tail is, the K2 uh, effect is much stronger, uh, but it's, it's true that it's important to model it, and okay. people are modeling it. And the question is actually, <laughs> I think there's a typo in one of your slides, because you put an energy emitted which is larger than the gravitational mass of the binary. Oh, sorry. Uh, which one? Uh, 3.2. How can this uh, be, uh, this means there's no binary anymore? Uh, but I think that this energy uh, in reality is, uh, is also uh, an estimate of, uh, that was inferred using the, uh, the pre-merger signal, so. Uh, but it's not possible, there can not be, you, you are emitting, yeah, there must be a minus two, uh, 10 to the minus two effect. 
Oh, okay, yeah. Okay, so my question related is how these numbers come out, and if, if it's correct. But it's yeah. larger. Yeah. It's larger than the binary mass, yeah. which is 2.8. Because this, this is something that means, uh, means uh, Ah. Okay. This is the energy at which the signal would be uh, visible. Would be. Uh, okay, okay, now I, now I understand. Okay, thank you. Okay, so other question or comments? Uh, I have one quick question, uh, which is related to the fact, uh, okay, related to all this probably. So uh, in this case, we were not able, as you have said, mm -hmm. uh, to uh, see the, the merger, uh, and so uh, because it happens at a uh, high frequency. Yeah. Clearly, for neutron stars, uh, this is going to happen always, and so we do hope to have a better and calibrated detectors uh, in that frequency region, because otherwise we will never be able uh, not to see this uh, kind of signals. Uh, I was wondering if uh, a very good unmodeled algorithm, uh, so something like a coherent or bust, but then uh, in order to study what happens uh, in that frequency region, uh, so this very quick uh, uh, you know, sweep in frequency, is something which uh, could be done or not, uh, so stated differently. Do you think that it is possible to study a good pro uh, data analysis algorithm which knows that the frequency variation is so quick mm -hmm. in that frequency region and tries to improve the signal-to-noise ratio which we have now, or this is something which is impossible? Uh, frequency region, you mean the frequency region uh in which the post-merger yeah, happens. The merger, the mer yeah, ah, okay. the, the merger phase. No, I was talking of the merger phase. Well, basically, uh, uh, can you repeat the question? Because I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, the you point said is that uh, if we can develop uh, an unmodeled yeah, search, yeah, an unmodeled search, okay. but aimed at doing something to improve the signal-to-noise ratio at the merger. I don't know if the question is clear. Because uh, we, 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 we didn't see the merger because the sensitivity is not good. But I guess also because the signal's evolution is so quick that probably the models used in coherent web bus are not good enough. Uh, okay, they are good. But but, uh, so c can you do something better which uh, is able to estimate this and at least improve the signal to noise ratio? Uh, no, uh, because you mentioned um, models used by CWB, but basically CWB uh, is not using, doesn't use models in order to be sensitive to the uh, widest possible uh, signal, uh, to the widest possible uh, signal range. Uh, so not only for uh, BNSs, but also for other kind of uh, yeah, that's, uh, of that's signals. Yeah, that's why I was asking if you could do something uh, to do something better uh, there. I don't know, but it's you. Yeah, no, uh, we don't use a model, but uh, we use uh, some, uh, uh, some pattern which uh, could help us uh, to, to, to pick up better the energy if the energy is distributed like uh, chirp, yeah, chirp up or cool. chirp down. So, uh, so actually we use for, for the VDH search, uh, we actually we use such pattern which improve the, 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 the energy selection. And uh, in principle it's possible to just, uh, okay, we essentially we, use, we have some pattern 
and essentially we use a, 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 a sort of a diagonal pattern to, to, to select a different uh, time, uh, yeah, time yeah. frequency resolution to select the vector, the energy. But uh, in, in principle, we can do also, we can just use a different pattern if we want just to focus in some particular, uh, some particular type of signal. Yes, 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 yes. There is something that is possible. Because I think it's interesting because even if we will have more sensitive data, then probably we'll always have this problem there. Okay, so other comments or questions? Okay, so let's thank Matteo again.